Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. A little background secret for you. I, ever since I haven't been preaching every Sunday, I still look at the lessons on Monday. And as I look at the lessons on Monday, there have been some times I have said to myself, sitting in front of my computer, looking at the lessons, boy, I'm glad I'm not preaching that day. <laughs> and you know, that's exactly what I said last Monday. <laughs> and then came Friday morning. And on my phone had this little, I you know, have your phone service and you can tell who's calling. And I saw the words, Denny Lewis. And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> and that's only because I follow on Caring Bridge everything that's happening with the Cooter family. In fact, I've taken it as a responsibility for myself that every time Liz puts something on Caring Bridge, I copy it and I send it to all the pastors in our circuit so that everyone knows what's happening. So in one sense, I wasn't surprised at the phone call, but in another sense, I was thinking to myself, you just said to yourself, you don't run a preach on those texts. <laughs> so what do you do? Friday morning. You know, like I said, my, my, my pattern has been if I'm preaching, Sunday, Saturday, uh, Monday, I will read the text. I will read about the lessons. And then they kind of mull there. They sit there until something, as I call the spirit, formulates what's to be said. And you know, he didn't have much time this week. <laughs> because I want to tell you, I've preached on this text before. And those of you that think those of us that are retired have this file cabinet that you can go and pull one out, uh-uh. I never have and I probably never will. And it's not stored on any disk, it's not stored on the computer, it's nowhere. Once you hear what I have to say and once I say what the Spirit leads me to say to you, it's gone. Unless somebody records it. So when I was looking at the lesson for the, you know, past memories came to me. Because every time I preached on this text, I always used to have problems with Jesus, with the Phoenician woman. And especially his words to her. He calls her a dog. Now it doesn't fit Jesus. But something told me that after all these years of trying to defend Jesus and trying to say to him, this is what was happening, this is why it's all going on, etc., cetera, et cetera, that's not where you need to go. Because that's not what this text is about. This text is about more about Jesus. This text is written in the Gospel of Mark. You know anything about the Gospel of Mark? First Gospel, short Gospel. I call Mark my TV Gospel. Why do I call Mark my TV Gospel or my newspaper Gospel? Because it gives you about this much and you have to figure out what's going on. It's like the clip on television. They tell you something and they give you the highlight and that's it and you've got to figure out what else is happening or what happened before, what happened afterwards, and anything else. That's all Mark does. Because he's got a message to get out. And the message is about Jesus. And so we come to today's, and suddenly I had to put this whole story into context. I had to put it back into the Gospel of Mark. And understand, what is Mark doing here? What's happening here? What does it say to you and to me? Let me give you a picture. Now, Carol and I were discussing this the other day. I was trying to think of, since Pastor Cooter was from New Jersey, 
And everybody knows Israel is about the same size as New Jersey, by the way, as a country. I was trying to put some perspectives on it, and I, I was having a hard time doing that. I'm not good with that. So I'm, I'm giving you another perspective. I want you to think of Israel about the size of, oh, just below, let's say, Hopewell all the way up to D.C., all the way up. That's, that's a perspective, okay? Think of it that big. And, and Richmond, oh, and I know there are a lot of you going to like this, Richmond is where Jesus really is. You know, it's like you Southerners. That's it. But Jesus is now going to Tyre and Sidon. Do you know where Tyre and Sidon is in placement of all this? Tyre and Sidon is up, you know, those suburbs of Washington, which some people wish was in another state. which is exactly what the Israelites thought of Tyre and Sidon. It was a place of Gentiles. It was a place of the wrong people. They weren't our God's holy people. They were those other people. They didn't, shouldn't, you know, all that stuff. So you've got to have that in perspective to understand what Mark is trying to say to us. Jesus is not in where he should be. Jesus has now left Richmond and he's gone up to those Washington suburbs, those other people. No offense on anybody that's from up that way, okay? Mark is trying to paint a picture here for us. Mark is now moving us that the child, the son of God, the Holy One of Israel, the one who was born to the Israelites, is now moving. The message of God's grace and love is now moving. It's moving from just God's own people. It's moving to others. It's moving out of the nice little confines, and now we're up in this other area, Tyre and Sidon. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as he goes up to there, he gets confronted. Well, there are crowds there, but you know, those doubters come to him, but they're not really doubters. They have some hope. They have some faith. This woman has faith, or she wouldn't have come to Jesus. She's heard of him. She knows of him. His word has kind of gone, a word about him has gone on and on throughout the land. So she comes to him. But it's important to hear these two parables, these two stories of healing for what they are. Not only are they outside the circle, but in both situations, if you listen carefully, the people who are asking Jesus for help are asking Jesus for help for somebody else. Can you pay attention to that? The woman came asking for her daughter. In the second healing, people brought this deaf, mute person to Jesus. Others brought him to Jesus. You begin to see what Mark's doing here? You begin to understand what this gospel story is about? It's not, don't get hung up on this woman being called a dog and forget about all that stuff. See the bigger picture of what is being said here. This is a message of God's grace and love. And if you want to say, oh, by the way, Luther had a fun comment about this whole parable. Luther said, and this is a quote from Luther, I'd like to be the dog under the table. Think about it. Because what was falling off the table was the grace of God. That's what's happening in this text. The whole grace of God is becoming 
more and more out there for others, not just for a select group, not just for a small group, but now the message Mark is trying to say to us is expanding out there. And guess what? There are those out there who believe the message even though they're not part of the right group. Hmm. Do you begin to see what it's being saying to you and to me today? In this year of our Lord, 2021. The message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who he is, his suffering, dying, and resurrection, his ascension into heaven, his gift for you and for me in this table, body, blood, given and shed for us, is a message which doesn't stay here. It's not exclusively here. It's a message which must get out there. Challenge, isn't it? Just like if you go back in this chapter in Mark, the beginning of chapter 7 and chapter 6, Jesus has a confrontation with the Pharisees. You don't know any Pharisees, do you? They're the ones that knew all the right answers and all the right way things should be done. And they held those rules and regulations to the nth degree. And Jesus kept chiding them. Jesus kept pushing them. Jesus kept challenging them to move because the grace of God flows even to those you might not think it flows to. Point one. Point two. And there are only two, so you don't have to worry. What I said to you before, the importance of what happened with the woman and what she was doing and what the crowd was doing. They were asking for someone else. I have to give you all credit as a congregation considering everything that's been going through. And you've been going through and watching Pastor Adam and Liz and Samuel and Nathan you're remembering them in your prayers, I know. And that's what we are about. That's what this gospel is also about. It is our responsibility to pray for each other. It is our responsibility to pray for someone else. That's not always easy to do, is it? Sometimes we think it's easy, but sometimes, you know, we kind of forget. And it's kind of, hey, God, I've had a good day. Thanks. Or I'm going to start this day, Lord. Remember to be with me, Heavenly Father. Guide me, direct me. What about everybody else? There is a message flowing here about remembering others in our prayers and asking God guidance, direction, intervention into their lives as well as ours. It's kind of interesting for to me today because, you know, I'm putting this all together and it all flows together and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, the, gospel, the second lesson from James, perfect reading. And it is, isn't it, if you begin to think about what, I'm going to, what I have just said to you. James says we've got to move outside of ourselves. We've got to be there as God's people. We've got to reach out of others. We can't be so selective. But we've got to live. And our faith produces. And that faith produces works. And we do good to others. And believe me, my friends, we have a lot of opportunities, whether it's within this congregation, whether it's with the cooters, or whether it's with a world out there that has changed so drastically, and others coming to this country are others that are living around us. 
we have a responsibility to help them and to care for them and to pray for them. And if you don't think prayer is important in the book of James, let me read you one thing. This lesson will probably come up in a couple of weeks. But, Danny, if I take it away from you for your lesson on a Sunday, it's the end of the book of James. Listen to what I said to you today. Hear what I said about those, the woman praying for her daughter, those others bringing that deaf man to him. And listen to what James says at the book, chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. That's it. I know you gather for prayer after the dismissal. Important. And it all begins with Mark and two individuals. A woman who was persistent, who was asking for her daughter. A crowd who cared about a man and brought him to Jesus. Let's do that. And yes, I have to be like Luther. Let some of those crumbs fall from the table. It's the grace of God that comes to you and to me and to the world around us. So let's proclaim it, let's live it, and let others be able to see who we are as God's people. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen.